Yo, what it is, YouTube fam. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the next session of Game Time. I am your gracious host, Mike Justin, founder, CEO, sole proprietor of Salmon Gundy Media. Like, comment, subscribe for the vibe if you like what you see. We've got a bunch of nerd shit in no particular order. As you can see, we're playing my personal long-awaited LP of Goemon's Great Adventure for the Nintendo 64. If you've never played Mystical Ninja, I kind of know the history. It started in Japan like the 80s, I think, on the Game Boy. It spanned across several consoles, the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, N64. Pretty much like a multi-platform game. It never really got much traction in the West, i.e. North America. Only two games came out on the 64. There's Mystical Ninja starring Goemon, and then the sequel, like a roughly year, year and a half apart. I did the first one on my YouTube channel a while back, but it was filmed with like my really, really shitty potato quality camera. So if you want to check it out, I may, I may link it up here somewhere. I don't know. I might re-record it, but I'm gonna try this. I'm super stoked to play this game. I adore it. It's gonna be a little bit weird because there are some graphical inconsistencies. I've played like a little bit, so I'm not sure how well it's gonna look on screen. If it looks like shit, I might just 86 it. And I'm playing it on the 8-bit do controller, so it's not really a real N64 controller, but I kind of configured the buttons similar to the N64, so Let's see how it goes. Maybe we'll have some fun with this. So going on Ibisumaru. I'm gonna go with my man Goy Man. And we're gonna watch this cutscene here if you've never played it. These games are definitely a little bit obscure in the United States. It's got like a cult. I guess like a cult following to it, but it's they these games are super fun. They're super Japanese and they're just silly. I love these cutscenes because it feels like I'm watching like an actual Japanese anime. Hopefully the volume is A-OK. -okay. Like watching a movie. <laughs> this is a little bit lengthy, but it's it's super fun to watch this. The wise man is one of my favorites. He's like Master Roshi, like the quintessential stereotypical dirty old man. Jeez, yeah, a lot of these jokes are too are like fucking hit or miss. Like they're so like obscure. <laughs> I don't know if this is something I like lost in translation, but <laughs> some of the jokes are just like crickets. <laughs> See, this game is just fucking silly, dude. Like, feudal Japan meets like sci fi. <laughs> So I think this character here, Bismaru, I think was in a Super Nintendo game. Uh, I think it's called a Mystical Ninja. This is to Bismaru. 
So it's basically our premise is gonna summon some demon. I'm not sure what our lover's playground is, but it sounds kind of dirty, doesn't it? No. This was kind of a theme in the first game too. Is there was like a giant peach-shaped UFO that was trying to turn Japan into a fucking dancing stage. <laughs> Right, so there's our intro, our impetus for our zany Japanese heroes to trek across Japan. <laughs> We're gonna do a safe state here. There we go. Alright. Check my time here. So hopefully um, audio, everything sounds okay, the visuals. We'll see how they hold up. So every character has got like a little bit of a uh, difference to them. They have different movesets, different weapons, obviously. Goemon's got his pipe right here. He's got a double jump. Which he didn't have in the first game. I'm gonna try to fucking play this like an N64 game, dude. So you see some of like the rasterization, the pixels on that back mountain there. I'm gonna try to do like one world, one area per episode. I mean, the game looks like total dog water. I might just can this. So this episode's gonna be like a trial run, I guess. You got a little cat doll power up, so see my pipe has a bigger reach now. There are kinds of fucking zany moves that you can crawl and attack and you can hold the Z button and make your character's like signature attack. So there's definitely a lot of fun array of moves here. But what this game did differently is what it is. It was called like a 2.5 dimensional game or 2.5D. So yeah, everything you see is like rendered 3D modeling. But it plays like a fucking 2D platformer. And it was that mix that really kind of took this game in a really cool direction. Because the first game, if you played it, it was a lot like Banjo-Kazooie and Mario 64, where it was all just free, kind of open-world roaming. But all in all, this game is just super fun. The Mystical Ninja games have awesome soundtracks. So... Hope you guys like this LP. We're just gonna kinda play it by ear. What I'm gonna kill any some fucking dumplings. I'll just do this. Oh yeah, that face on there is the the impact boulder, I guess it's called. Basically Goemon's got this really big like robot sidekick that he can summon. It's like a big ass seashell. He blows into it and an impact appears. So there's like a ton of boss fights here too with robots. Like none of these fucking plotlines make any kind of sense. But they're just, they're fun to play man. That's all I can say. This game is just super fun to play. I was hoping too with this controller. I don't whiff this game because of the controller being so... Unlike the N64. <laughs> giant tanuki so you collect entry passes which are these little wooden boards here that lets you pass to different areas so I think you need like five to clear the first area to move on to the next one then you get you need like 10 then 15 so we'll try to get all 44 I think there's 44 in this whole game so if we want to get 100% completion okay so we're in Edo town right now um, I'm not really sure where the fuck... I can't remember where to go, I think. Gorman needs his chain pipe. It's, it's like a projectile weapon that shoots really long like a chain. I have to go to Gorman's house. 
Just listen to the music, it's so ambient. It's that chef's kiss, man, I'm telling you. This is Goemon's house here. You've talked to this woman here. What for? Just need a little money, but won't have any. So I lend this person a hundred coins. Which I just love getting out my money. Money has no place here. Now get ready for this, you ready? You go to the beauty salon. <laughs> it's a fucking dude. Kensuke. It was Kensuke's brother Kenzo. So I think you encounter both these guys here at different points in the game. Okay, so I got the chain pipe. The R button, alright. So can I... That's the speed up button. I can't remember where the... R button is. Alright. I hope I set the R button control. I may have forgotten. <laughs> So you jump down the well, sometimes there's these guys called Iguana Men. Sometimes they send you on like little side quests. They give you entry passes. Every town has like different things you can do to earn more uh, entry passes. So like this one. He literally just gives me one to leave him alone. Alright, you cool with that? I know when to mind my own business. So there's definitely a lot of areas to explore in these little towns. So each each major area has its own like little town built into it. To where you go on like side quests and whatnot. And the inn. I, mean, I guess we don't need the inn, seeing as how I save state, but y'all know I'm paranoid AF, so I'm gonna save my game. Out here. In the dead of night. That's one thing I love about this game too, is it brought the day night. Um, mechanic, which is really cool. And here, I think is where we meet Sasuke. Sasuke, the robot ninja. Yeah, here we go. So there's four main characters. We've got Goemon, Ibisumaru, who's dressed like a Japanese burglar, and then Sasuke, the uh, robot ninja, and then Yai. Who's like the secret ninja warrior. We'll encounter her later on. So Impact, which is the giant robot that looks like Goemon. He's apparently short-circuiting. Wreaking all kinds of havoc. So... I can leave the cutscenes in on part one. And if you guys aren't digging them, if you're not feeling them... I could just press start through them, but if you guys want to watch the little cutscenes, they're good for a chuckle. They have some some fun jokes, and they kind of move the plot along. <laughs> I love the old N64 animations. Goemon's like jerking his fist. If they made the same movements while they talk. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. So Princess Yuki is the one in o Edo Castle. So our, our main objective for this world is to get to Edo Castle, stop Impact from destroying it. And then just beat whatever boss Sister Bismaru has for us. So here you can actually change your characters, so like we talk to him. And there's certain characters that you have to use throughout the game to traverse beyond certain areas and they get certain entry passes. So each character definitely has like their own time to shine. And so here I think is the next entry pass we can get. Uh, yeah, this guy. Beat Mania. Traveling DJ. I'm not sure if he was a thing in Japan too. I feel like he was. He was a character in some other game in Japan. But yeah, he lost the three sacred treasures. <laughs> So a lot of these little side quests here aren't usually super difficult. You have to 
backtrack some levels and get him. So I have to retrieve the microphone, the LP, and the microphone in the time limit. So it gives us quite the generous time allotment. That clock countdown counts down hella fast. I ain't no Santa Hedgehog, man. She. Alright, got the headphones. Boom, 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 boom. Fuck, if I die, I'm pissed. Wait, can I use my chain pipe? No, I can't. Shit. Alright, so I've just set the button for the chain pipe. Make sure I don't fucking get hit. Yeah. Did I forget to set the R button? Hmm. I can always fix it later, I guess. I don't want to die here. So what are you guys doing? It's Tuesday here. Been contemplating making some new designs for merch for the Samogun Media Store. I have a couple ideas in mind. Let's be doing a little bit of research. I might make like beer coasters, I think. So I have a couple different ideas in mind. I'm just playing around with them. Um, I guess just designing it and then picking the font for it and all that good stuff. Oh god. That's like the Womp from fucking Mario 64. <laughs> That's always the first thing I thought of. I see these things. So the third treasure, there we go. That's a record scratch. <laughs> you so fine, you blow my mind. So I could kiss you, bro. I hope not. You get your shit back, but that's it. No kissing. <laughs> oh dear God. Okay, so how many entry passes do I have? If you pause, you can see. All right, so I got three. So I think it's all I can do in this town for now. I'm trying to remember where the fuck my. I don't think I did the chain pipe on here. I can leave town here and then go on to the next levels. Mm hmm. Alright. Ring bell pass. Did I set the chain pipe? No? Shit, son. Alright. Hope I don't need my chain pipe, because I totally forgot to fucking. I guess it's because I have the fucking. Ah, shit, alright. I'm gonna try some. I'm gonna pause this real quick and see if I can. All right, so I get rid of uh, the game controls here. I'm gonna fucking see if I can fix the controller here. This may or may not work. Try R2. For R. Hmm hmm hmm. So I'm gonna try to do R for R2. Hopefully that'll work. Alright, let's see if that. Alright. There we go. Alright, so that's my chain pipe. So you need that to break these fucking blocks here. Yes. Now I'm out of buttons. Okay. I think we got all the buttons now. Let's have that speed up for fucking Pokemon games. <laughs> That's like one default I got to have in Pokemon, because that game, when games get fucking super tedious. Well, let's try to stay on topic here, shall we? 
And some of those have multiple exits too, like that walkway up there is, I think, a different exit. Yeah. One thing I love too is when it turns nighttime, you get double the money, but also the music changes. Oh god. That's like a bull spider, did y'all see that? Run, just run, don't be a hero. Shit, alright, fuck. Need yeah, that helps, that helps. There's an extra life up there too. Comment below if you guys have played any of the Mystical Ninja games. Doesn't matter what platform. They've been on a ton. They've been, like I said, they've been on Game Boy, Nintendo, Famicom, if you're from Japan. Ugh, Super Nintendo. I played, the first game I ever played was the N64, one that came out in 1998. And then I played the sequel. I was so stoked. So the sequel came out when I'm back in 1999. I was like 15 or 14 years old. It's like I rented the first game in like 97. Me and my my sister's friend's brother, he rented this on a whim, and we didn't really know like much about like Japanese anime or the Japanese culture, so we watched it. And it had like one of those like Japanese like theme intros, like watching an actual anime. And we were both like, "What the hell is this?" Like we were just laughing our asses off. I remember. But I played the game, and dude, that is the rest is history, man. I love that game. So when this game finally came out, I was excited. Alright, so we're doing alright. Now some- oh yeah, I have to go back and do this one lower here. Uh. So I think I need to beat- yeah, the dig-a-dig. Dig-a-dig. Yo, is there diglet in here? Hold up. You have to come back here to get another side quest entry pass. You have to kill these big ass... They look like blobs, like with... Long noses, like I don't even know what the hell they're supposed to be. They're called... Uh, mud Trotters. And they like roll towards you, they fucking like shoot bullets at you, it's really bizarre. But you have to come back on another side quest and kill like a bunch of them. Within the time limit to get another entry pass. Go. So there's like multiple routes. I can't fully remember where they go. Oh, this part right here is sweet. Go wait for it. Oh no, no big deal. It's a fucking big skeleton. Come on, boy. A fire shooting skeleton. Get more fucking ball than that. I don't think so. I'm not sure if I can come back, boys. I think I could stand here and not get hit. And also, the skeleton has no clavicle. If you look closer, right there, he's got no collarbone. <laughs> I always, I always thought that was funny. You're like, shut up, nerd! I think that's it. This isn't anatomy class, nobody cares. <laughs> Why well, care? better the boss fights man because you need to use the C buttons to like pull off combos and shit and I got the other analog stick as my C buttons I'm wondering is that gonna be like awkward as fuck shit <laughs> like am I gonna be able to beat this game <laughs> oh man all right I'm in my fucking buttons I'm gonna chain pipe your ass boy come on ah. This one takes some getting used to. Not being an N64 controller. Gotta play it safe. 
Alright. Bazingu, let me guess. I was so close to starting another Pokemon Crystal uh, LP. Or a randomized Nuzlocke. I have another Nuzlocke randomized. I was like, I really want to play this game though. Let's get it done. Okay, so this is the checkpoint to the castle. Oh, sorry. Mike, you good? Mike, you good? So once you collect a certain number of entry passes, you can get in, gain access to the castle, which is like, like Zelda dungeons, more or less. Watch your backs. And then you beat the castle, and you beat the uh, the robot boss, and then you move on to the next stage. So on and so forth. So that's impact right there. Castle's just fucking on fire. It's... What is he doing? Ugh. This little ninja cat named Kurobe appears on the scene. He was actually another one of the older games too, I think, from the Nintendo that I never knew about until a couple years back. So Omitsu is basically Gorman's his love interest. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fight on Impact's head. There's some weird mind control shit going on. Which, can you mind control a robot? I mean, what is impact anyways? Is he like artificial intelligence? Does he have like a robot mind that can be altered? That's... I have questions. This file size is gonna be huge. <laughs> Fuck. Low disk space. <laughs> Here we come. Okay, so Edo Castle. Let's get it. Alright. Edo Castle's in the, the first game. I get my chain pipe like rock and roll in there. And you get the habit of like fucking smashing multiple buttons again. Oh shit, there you go. So that gold cat doll, that gives you like a fully upgraded weapon and full armor. You've only got like three hit points, which kind of sucks ass. But then those blue ones down there, that's like your extra hits. So yeah, gold cat dolls are like highly coveted. Especially for people like me who suck at this game. I would play this shit like religiously back in the day. So far, so good. Yo, going on double jump is just clutch, dude. That platform, if you push down, you can actually go to like the tea house area and switch your characters if you need to. Some areas you can't get past without certain characters. I feel like Gormon's like the easiest player to beat this game with. Because Bissimaru's jump is horrible. I feel like Sasuke is probably like a number two. And maybe Yai. And maybe Bis. I guess it's because he's so heavy, I think. He's just a slower character all around. But I man, his jump is ass. Your jump is ass, good sir. Ass. I need to make that that cheddar. Yeah, some of these castles get fucking crazy hard though. 
Thing after like the third cast, the third area is heinous. The first two aren't all that bad. Alright. Rocky, we're rolling. Is this gonna be a zero death? A no death run? Yeah, probably not. I'm not gonna jinx myself. <laughs> In this game too, since it's like a 2D platformer, you can actually use the D-pad on the N64 controller rather than the joystick. I feel like the D-pad is always easier for me to use it. Uh, I'm gonna go left here. Okay, what the fuck do I... Oh, okay. That platform is gonna fall for a second. Now we get to the rooftop. This part always that's impacts fist. He's like banging the rooftops. I would always love playing in this section right here because it has a cool perspective switch where like the angle of the roof kind of shifts. So you're running from a different angle. I'll show you what I mean. It's pretty cool. I think it's right here. Yeah, right here. So like, you're turning like that corner there. So you're on a different side of the roof. That's such a cool perspective trick there. Okay, just about. Oh shit! We're almost out of here. Bitch. <laughs> This area is in the first game too. Like all this back, all this these backgrounds here look just like the first game too. So this might look familiar if you played the first game. It's like your checkpoint marker will go for the guy. I'm trying to keep the commentary like somewhat exciting. Some of these areas need like this uber concentration. Otherwise you die. Can I go up here. Ugh. Awkward jumps. I swear to God, I'm gonna get that chain pipe to work. Fucking trick shots. I will land one at some point. Mark my words. Alright. I'm like dreading these boss fights. So I don't know how the fuck I'm gonna do on this controller. Ugh! Sometimes it's hard to see where you are too, because all this, like all these graphics, like in the foreground and midground and background, they tend to like trip you up. It's hard to tell where exactly you are. See, I love shit like that too. Impact in the background, just walking around. It's so cool. Right. My hands are sweating, guys. Uh, oh, oh shit. Thought I got hit there. Right, so I'm not gonna question. Get it, get it, get it. This game has a two player co op mode too. You can actually like piggyback on your partner's back and do like a group attack. It's really fucking, it's really cool. This shit right here, he starts firing bullets at you. I thought we were friends, Impact. I thought we were friends. 
Damn, man, it's getting, it's getting ruthless already, man. Extra life. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna need that. Smashing pots in Zelda. <laughs> yeah. Watch it there, hot foot. I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do for the thumbnail for this video too. This is gonna be interesting. That's yes, I think. Okay. I'm so sweaty. And now we're getting to the boss room. And that took us like 40 fucking minutes. Alright. I'm just nervous about this boss fight. Another extra life, nice. Yo, we out here. Now we're on Impact's head. <laughs> and all this gives you like a goofy intro to the boss, like the mini boss you're gonna be fighting. Shishi <laughs> Scarecrow, a brainwashing machine. <laughs> Alright, so it's got his health gauge up there. Basically, you gotta hit these little explosives back into it. That's basically the pattern. Duh! This is the most bizarre thing I've seen. Like the head's just a weird scarecrow and it's got like a body of like a dog head, I'm not sure what that is, man. The Japanese game creators be. And it's got metallic like a fucking a mace for a tail. <laughs> but this thing is not fucking around. And impact. Fucking punches his own head. <laughs> Keep running in circles, man. Uh, should be in the last round here. Open. There you go, all right. Easy dubs. Coffee's gone. Game's over, the coffee's empty, we're done. See you next time. That is Omitsu. For those that give a fuck. <laughs> I think these cutscenes are gonna just, like, rack up the time on these files. I don't know, man. I might just... 86. I say the hell with the storyline is get to the gameplay. I don't know. You guys got to let me know. Cutscenes, yes. Cutscenes, no. I'm cool with either one. The wise man just beams down like he's from fucking Star Trek. Bow, 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 bow. It's like one of my favorite themes in this game. Oh. It's like a stretch, guys. Oh, so he makes like a female version of um, Impact, like Omitsu. <laughs> I'm telling you, these are like the silliest games I've ever played, but there's too much fun, man. Oh, I forgot, yeah, you can tag team between robot partners when you're in a robot boss fight. You have like a baton that you throw to your partner when you're getting low on health. Boy, that's not going to be the case for us. You know what I'm saying? Because we out here. We're going to get fucking destroyed, probably. <laughs> I'm going to try to remember the combos. I think you can pause the screen and you can actually see. Oh my 
god, look at those eyes. Alright. So I think if I pause it, yeah, okay. A and B. Oh my god, this is like B B A, this attack. Down down Z, okay. Oh god. Down down Z, it's down down Z. I think I got it. Okay, you can kick. Oh um, this takes someone getting used to. Wait, what? Oh. Oh, I have to use the cooking controller. Ah, shit. Alright, so I gotta use the control safe for this. Yeah, I forgot it's a robot fight. Ah, fuck. God, this is gonna be a fucking nightmare. UVA. Okay, up, down, up, there. God, this is gonna be so hard without the fucking control stick. Nice. Boom. Alright. Oh shit. Down, down. What? Down, down. Down, down. Okay. Okay. This is so hard without the fucking actual C button. Oh my god, it's terrible. God. If I was like on an N64 control, I'd be like done with this shit for real. Fucking. <laughs> so hard. Without the fucking. He's just swooping. Ah. A 45 minute fight. Okay, the Z button got the fucking. This is like so fucking awkward. I don't know the fucking pattern. Uh oh. Come on. Oh fuck. I missed a special attack. Ah oh, crap. Fuck. Dang, son. It's weird too because like my A button is the B button on this control. <laughs> That's not confusing. <laughs> uh, down down A. I'm rusty as shit, guys. I'm like, what the fuck? And you get coins too, and you can get nasal bullets that you shoot out of your nose, which is just gross. Nice! And sometimes your partner will knock the robot into you. Alright, I think we got him. Come on! Come on! Fucking impact use hyper beam over here. Alright. Starting to become cemented now. Still like super nervous. So I can knock out this boss. I think it'll be in good shape. Oh shit. Ah crap. So sometimes they do a special attack and the screen turns like purple like this. Ugh, sorry. But you know you're pretty much fucked when they do that special attack. It's, you can throw the baton to switch your partner and that'll cancel out the special attack, but it's, sometimes it's really hard to pull off. Man. Yeah, it's gonna be fucking damn near impossible. Without the actual control stick. Alright. Okay, moving in for the kill, man. Should be able to do it. Alright. Uh oh. Alright, if we can survive this, we're good. Come on, 
baby. There you go. Nice impact. <laughs> Fucking got it. Alright. W. Yes. Oh my god, that's even the first fight is so fucking hard on this controller. <sighs> I'm dreading that final boss if we get there. <laughs> Alright, so our first wall is done. Alright, not bad. Not bad. Second try, I'll take it. Just off the cobwebs, you know? Ho, 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 ho. Were you Santa Claus up in here? Look at those sad anime Jigglypuff eyes. Look at that. <laughs> Woo! Alright. Here goes dynamite. Nice. Alright, alright. Okay, Edo Castle's not on fire anymore. I don't know how defeating the robots stopped the fire, but alright. Don't, don't, don't question it. That's the Lord of the Castle, and then Princess Yuki. Gormont's like, oh, on a day's work, cuz, you know what I'm saying? So now, Yugu Island is the next stage, and that's where we meet Yai, the, uh, the green haired ninja chick. It's like, I have heard of this place. One thing too about the first game is that I had a laugh track <laughs> for all the cheesy jokes. <laughs> I could like mentally hear the laugh track being played in this game. It would help if you spoke more quickly. God. Get to the point, bitch. He's like, we out. <laughs> Make me proud, man. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's so bad, it's good sometimes. The Island on the Tortoise. Okay, YouTube fam, that's gonna do it for episode one of Let's Play. What the fuck game is this? Goemon's Great Adventure. Hope you guys liked it. Let me know some feedback if you want to keep the cutscenes in, all that jazz. Because this file is gonna be hella huge. And if you guys like what you see, if you want to keep following the LP, you know what to do. Smash that like button. That just sounds weird to say that. Subscribe for the vibe if you like what you see. If you like nerd shit in no particular order, you know where to come. Thanks again for coming in. Mike Justin's going to sign out. Peace.